welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L. Kevin Jank. I could just yell spoon, but in the words of my cousin Pete, why spoon when you can fork? There you go. <laughs> yes, yeah, spoon is the war cry of the hero we are reading today. Jank, why don't you tell the kids what it is? Yeah, so today we're going to be reading The Tick, number three. Uh, from 1988, I do believe. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I think the one we were kind of reading is from a reprint that came out later, but yeah, yeah. the original release, I believe, was 1988. Yeah, The Tick, of course, uh, he had cartoons and TV shows. We'll talk about that as we go. Yeah. But he's, he's a big blue guy. Well, he's a guy in a big blue <laughs> costume. And he's yep. just uh, invulnerable. Blue tick costume, strong. Which, you know. Is a choice. <laughs> you don't see a lot of blue ticks, I don't think. Well, originally the costume was supposed to be brown, but then when they uh, printed it up, they said, oh, this doesn't look good. So they thought blue looked better when they printed it. So they're like, all right, let's make it blue. Yeah. So, you don't see a lot of brown in superhero costumes, except, yeah. except for like the grizzly and the gibbon, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that old tar, uh, that old tarantula guy from uh, Justice Society. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Get a brown costume. But anyway, before we uh, get into all that, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I believe uh, we're up to 186 subscribers, so I think we picked up two since last week. Two (laughs) marching on. Slow crawl. Yeah, but we're getting there. And, uh, yeah, of course, T-shirts are still available. Flying off the shelves, Jank. The (laughs) T-shirts. I'm holding out for that, uh, you know. Don't get any jank on your T-shirt. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I should make one of those. I'll wear that everywhere. <laughs> of course, merch one nine books dot com. And while you're while you're at one nine books dot com, buy some books. Will it kill you to read? No, I don't think it will. <laughs> and uh, all right, let's talk It'll about just the tick. You horribly. So the tick, he was created by a fella named uh, Ben Edland, mm-hmm. and the tick's first appearance was in New England Comics Newsletter issue 14, 1986. Edlin was only 18 at the time when he designed the character. And I mean, this that's was old a new... compared to the people that Marvel used to hire. <laughs> an old but man. He, uh, he was a character. He was like the mascot for the a comic book store's newsletter, New England Comics. They had a chain of stores around the Boston area. And Edlin was a frequent customer at the store. He was hanging around all the time. And they said, we need a mascot for a newsletter. He said, hey, I'll draw you a mascot. So that's how he created the Tick, and uh, he proved popular. So the Tick spun off into his own independent comic book series in 1988, and it was just, uh, I think it was put out by New England Comics. Yep, sure and was. Edlin produced 12 black and white issues from March 1988 to May of 1993, so they're a little sporadic in there. <laughs> Not yeah. exactly. Kind of that, that uh, early Ninja Turtle schedule where it's like, oh, yeah. The first, like, three years, there was, like, five issues. <laughs> okay. And Edlin wrote, he wrote and drew the book. And uh, the other big thing about this that I want to, so, 93, it ended. 1994, the Tick animated series comes out on Fox. Wow. So, yeah, this kid put out 12 issues of a black and white comic book for his local comic book store, essentially. <laughs> and then he gets a, an animated cartoon out of it. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, that is honestly insane. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, he would have been. How old would he have been? Uh, Eighteen and eighty-six. So let's let's do the math there. Add seven. Another so he'd have been twenty-five by the time the cartoon yeah. deal came in. <laughs> and so yeah, he ended the uh, series at issue twelve, and then he went to work on the cartoon. He was a writer and everything on the cartoon. Man, so what a gig. <laughs> I know. That's when I first learned about. The Tick was through that. Oh, yeah, tick. of course. I would have been, uh, how old were they, 18 or so when that came out. And uh, that lasted three seasons. Yeah, on the Fox Kids Network, I remember. I never really watched it that much. You'd think I would have, but I didn't watch it that regularly. Basically, The Tick World, it's just a parody of superhero comic books, and The Tick is like a yeah. big, dumb guy. and <laughs> uh, But he's just a goof. Like, he's like childlike. He's very yeah. innocent. Very lovable, but, but yeah. dumb, kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dumb as a bag of rocks. And <laughs> uh, he just protects this city, whatever, like kind of like Superman or whatever. And But all the other heroes and villains in the book are all like kind of parodies of heroes and villains and just goofiness, right? 
Yeah. So, yeah. They're kind of over the top. Like, I feel like they're like Dick Tracy villains in certain ways. Very obvious names. Like chair face Chippendale. He had a chair for a head, for a face, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's what it is exactly. And uh, he also had two live action TV shows. The first was in okay. 2001. And I remember that one because it, uh, it starred uh, David Putty, Patrick Warburton. Um, yeah. yeah. David Putty from Seinfeld. And he played the Damn tick. Right. Great I, choice. Like that is perfect. Yes. It right really there. was. He was. I don't, I don't recall. Do any better. <laughs> how long was that? That wasn't very long there, was it? I think just like. No, season. not too long at all. Um, I wish I knew exactly how many, but no, it didn't last. And then uh, in 2017, he got a second live action TV show. That's right. And I, are you familiar with that one? Was it on Amazon or something? Or? That, I think, was an Amazon show. I think I watched the first two episodes, maybe three, and I was just kind of like, eh, you know what? I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just never went back to it. It might have been one of those things where they released the first three, and then they, it was weekly after that, and I just wasn't that interested in going back the next week. Um, yeah, it was okay. It started like the guy who uh, played one of the Nova Corps guys in uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. <laughs> like, he was the chick. Oh, okay. The kind of like the main one who's like, they're a bunch of a-holes or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was their guy. So not quite as, as dramatic as, uh, you know, Patrick David Warner. Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that show lasted two seasons, if I remember correctly. And, yeah. Uh, it but, seems uh, fine. It's just, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't funny enough to keep me interested in the characters. I also wasn't that invested in either. So it's like, well, you're not really giving me too much to, to stick around for. Now, in the comic book series, The Tick, he originally was uh, legally insane, and he escaped from a mental institution. Like, that was his backstory. <laughs> <That's> all right. <laughs> <laughs> but he had no memory of who he was before he became The Tick. Like, he's just, like that. He's always been The Tick, so there's no, you can't go into his childhood or anything. He's just, it's always The Tick. <laughs> he's crazy. Did now, he explain where he got the powers at any point? Not that I know of, no. Like, he was just always The Tick. It's always a tick. <laughs> yep. So the cartoon and the TV series, they each had different setups that didn't involve the tick being insane. Like that was only in the comic books where he escaped from a mental. Like that's too dark for kids. Yeah. <laughs> but in every other uh, incarnation of the tick, it's always like he just never remembers anything except being the tick. Like that's all he remembers. So that's okay. pretty cool. I like that. You don't yeah. have to go about any dopey origin stories. Over and over again, you know, I'm just the tech. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> just is what it is. Yeah, when you're kind of just doing a, a parody comic, what do you need a big fancy origin for? We're just here for some jokes. And he's just a big square jawed powerhouse guy, goofy, lighthearted, childlike, and vulnerable. I guess he also has a, a drama power, I believe he's known as, where like the more uh, dramatic a situation, the stronger he gets. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the Hulk, I guess. Except, you know, when, <laughs> the matter he gets, the stronger he gets. Yeah, like he's um, a, uh, the tech's a clutch performer, you know, when it comes to, uh, 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 it comes through. And as you yeah, mentioned earlier, it's his, just like the luck powers almost that like Domino or Longshot have. <laughs> Where it's like things will just kind of work out in his favor when they need, he needs it to. And as you mentioned earlier, his big battle cry is Spoon. And mm -hmm. that was created because one day he was eating a bowl of cereal and he yelled Spoon. <laughs> That's exactly how that happened. And uh, what else do we need to know about the tick? He also had a sidekick named Arthur. That's right. Arthur is introduced in the very next issue, issue four. Is when he oh, we just missed up. him. Yeah, I just missed him. And Arthur's just like a, a pudgy little accountant guy, right? And he dresses like a moth. Yeah. And <laughs> this will be my alter ego someday when I get the nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too frail to be the tick. But, uh, yeah, he dresses like a moth, but everybody thinks he's a bunny because he, he's got, like, big ears on his costume for some reason, <laughs> yeah. like the antenna. But, so. Yeah, yeah. He's Anything better else about Arthur? Costume design. But uh, Arthur's kind of like the brains of the operation, right? Like he's Yeah. He's the sidekick, but he's kind of the one in charge because the tick, like we mentioned, is just kind of childlike and, and a big doofus. So yeah. he's the one kind of doing the, 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 the heavy lifting, as you will. Yeah, Arthur's not beating anybody up, but he can, like, fly yeah. around and stuff. Yeah. But it, I guess, guess uh, he's doing. Do you know who uh, did his voice in the 1994 cartoon? And I'm talking about Arthur here. You know what? I don't. 
Mickey Dolans. Oh, look at that. Yeah. From None of the Beatles monkeys. voices on the tip. Right. So, uh. That's another <laughs> point in the monkey's favor. And the great monkeys Beatles debate. Yep. <laughs> Is there anything else we need to know about uh, the tick jank? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think we hit Good. the highlights. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right so. Only 12 issues, and then they're like, here's a series. That, that yeah. boggles my mind. It is nuts. <laughs> all right. So uh, there has to be another story about how that all happened, like how that deal got made. Like he must have. It had to just be the most fortuitous. Yeah, it must have just been the before. time. Like they're like Ninja Turtles hit so big. That's what probably what it was, here? actually. You know, yeah. indie comics are out there that we could mine, <laughs> and like this yeah. seems kind of funny. Let's do this. That's ex- probably exactly what it was. I didn't even think of that. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the cover, Jank. And again, uh, the version we read is a digital scan of like an anniversary, a tenth anniversary issue, but um, mm-hmm. it's the same cover that's on the mall. Yeah. Just, yeah. They may have some different, uh, yeah. you know labels on it but that's about it yep <laughs> uh so we got the uh the new england comics logo which is kind of a uh like the nec is in yellow and there's like a circle and some like lines behind it and it says new england comics press so probably the first and only time we'll be seeing them in yes this show. I was <laughs> so. they put the uh the number over on the other side there and we got the tick big kind of x-men letters um yeah yellow with like orange behind it or yeah the kind of the raised raised up kind of 3d-ish kind of colors or uh type of letters and then we got a cool shot very i like this cover quite a bit um of the city and the tick has got his back to the camera he's kind of looking behind him uh and then we got in front of him a woman who is definitely not electra because she's you know wearing a yellow suit instead of uh red but other than that, she looks pretty much exactly like her and, you know, has size and everything. Same ninja outfit. Uh, Same and they're head, surrounded. Head scarf. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. Uh, and they're surrounded by ninjas that are totally not the hand either. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty funny how all the uh, independent comic books just uh, basically ripped off Daredevil. With it, like Teenage Mutant <laughs> yeah. Ninja Turtles ripped off Daredevil. The Ticks ripping off Daredevil. Frank Miller's <laughs> Daredevil really spawned a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good cover, and we see like swords pointed to a. a well, it's not Electra, but uh, what, what's her name in it? Oedipus. What her name is? Oedipus. Yeah. Oedipus. Because the it's the opposite of the Electra. Yeah. 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 The Oedipus complex is when a, a little boy falls in love with his mom and gets mm-hmm. protected, and the Electra is like the uh, reverse. He she falls in love with her dad. So. Yep. There you go. So yeah, I like the cover, but um, you know, it's basically yeah, it's got a cool kind of pastel, like almost. Like, uh, pencil, like colored pencil almost. It's kind of, it's very cool looking. Yeah. I mean, the art's not the greatest here, but, uh, it looks very much <laughs> yeah. like an 18 or 19 year old kid drew it. But yeah. So I would put it on like the level of like a mad magazine type of art is what it, it felt like to me. Oh, I th- uh, there's some really good Mad Magazine stuff, though. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not like the stuff where they're drawing celebrities that look like celebrities. Yeah, like, yeah okay. The other stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, the other stuff. Yeah. All right, so uh, we open it up here, and uh, we see uh, Oedipus, a uh, bunch of ninjas here yelling at her, and she's jumping over a wall to get Well, we don't know they're ninjas actually yelling at her yet, <laughs> but uh, – they're shooting arrows at her and stuff. She's jumping over a wall to get away from it. And we see Knight of a Probably Million. Yes, yeah, because of the title of yeah. the issue. Knight of a Million Zillion Ninja. <laughs> yeah, like uh, ninja used as a plural here and singular. Um, yeah. I've always heard it as ninjas, but uh, ninja. Which do you prefer, Jake? Because um, the tick in this book calls them ninjas, plural. But, yeah, it uh, seems like something the tick would do. <laughs> They're saying that's why so I guess. Dropped. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm the smartest the tick. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, like, when did ninjas become mainstream in America? Like, that's a good question. When I was a kid, um, it was really uh, like Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow and GI Joe. Yeah, is really when I got introduced to ninjas. And uh, I mean, they, they became like villains in like everything at a certain point, like. I there were a lot of like was. Chuck like, Norris. Obviously, the hands didn't exist until Frank Miller came up with them. Like they weren't in the Marvel mm-hmm. universe, I don't think, till that point. That, that is a good question. Um, 
I know. I remember like there are Chuck Norris movies where he's fighting ninjas and stuff. So. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We maybe this is a topic for the LCS show. We'll dig into the history of ninjas. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Like I'm sure in All the right. 60s there weren't a lot of ninja movies. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Probably late 70s is when it happened. All the karate and kung fu stuff. But uh, yeah, I like this splash page though, and uh, the perspective of it, looking up the wall and everything. So they did a good job there. But old Oedipus, she uh, falls into a garbage can. <laughs> what? She falls down. Oof. Bud. I guess that's also how they can say, oh, this is totally not Electra because she's terrible at being a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Electra's actually competent. And these ninjas, are they keep shooting uh, arrows at her. She keeps running away. And uh, these ninjas like to crack little jokes and stuff yeah. while they're chasing her. <laughs> um, I happened to see the uh, the thought balloon on the final page of this book, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is definitely the one to pick. <laughs> Can't <laughs> <Like> remember. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, okay, I remember now. I'll save it. Yeah. I'll save it till the end. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these ninjas, I guess uh, <clears throat> Electra stole an artifact from them, the Thorn of Oblivion, I believe it's called. Yep. And so these uh, ninjas that are definitely not the hand, they want to get that artifact back. And uh, what's the little joke they make here when they're climbing over the wall? Uh, give us back the artifact and no one will get hurt. Throw me the idol and I'll throw you the whip. Little Indiana Jones reference. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, these don't seem like your typical ninja. We'll find out later on the issue why that is. Uh, do we? I don't even remember that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Electra's hiding behind a brick wall. She's like, that's crap, and you know it, Henry. And uh, a little something I like to call director duress is needed there. Let's get a comment in there before the Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're just making weird newsletters and <laughs> indie comics, you don't have an editor, apparently, but he could have used you. <laughs> Maybe you could have yeah. got a piece of that TV deal. <laughs> sweet, sweet TV deal. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they just want to get the artifact back, and Electra, oh, sorry, Oedipus is shooting back at them, and <laughs> They're shooting arrows at her, and uh, they're chasing each other. But she eventually climbs up a brick wall to get away from them. She climbs up a building. And who's at the top of the building, Jank, when she gets Oh, Well, there's the tick, just standing by the edge of the building, looking out, narrating to himself about how awesome he is. Like, he's do, you have a, do you have a tick voice? Because you're good at voices on <laughs> Let me try to do my Patrick Warburton. All right. He stands like some sort of pagan god <laughs> or deposed tyrant staring out over the city he's sworn to to stare over and it's evident just by looking at him that he's got some pretty heavy things on his mind that's pretty good i like it <laughs> it's not bad at all yeah and he's uh speaking those words out loud those aren't thoughts he's speaking them out loud so he's yep. again he's a very dramatic guy <laughs> and uh He's got to increase his powers by being dramatic and oedipus uh walks up behind him and she's like hey mister and uh he turns around there, and and he's like, he likes her size. He's like, hey, hey, hey can I uh, touch those? They look neat. <laughs> and he's talking about the size and on her bosom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else is? Uh, but she's like, hey, there's some ninjas that are coming to kill me. Yeah, you should probably get out of here. <laughs> uh, he's like, hey, like me and the, this girl's obviously upset. Maybe you could come back a little bit later. And they start making fun of his, uh, his little antlers. Well, well, first he tries to calm her down. He says, ninjas aren't dangerous. They're more afraid of you than you are of them. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ninjas are on the opposite building, like across the alleyway. They're on that rooftop. And they're shouting across, Oedipus, give us the thorn. And uh, Tick tries to reason with them, you know. And then they start making fun of him, Jank, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they tell him they're going to choke him to death with his own antenna. <laughs> he says, are you threatening me? <laughs> uh, no, we're not threatening you, but not, we were threatening you, but now we're just mocking you, bug boy. All right, so that's it. It's going to get bad. <laughs> yep, now he's going to throw a chimney at him. <laughs> <laughs> that's his plan. <laughs> throw a chimney at him. And then we get a cool shot of all the ninja, like this army of ninjas just jumping over the uh, the, the buildings there, the space between the buildings. And uh, there's a bunch of exclamation points, and then they start jumping back and flying back. And that's how I, we find out that the tech is just trouncing them. 
I may have made the border, the gutters between the panels a little wider because it all kind of bleeds yeah. together. <laughs> yeah, I can see. And it. at first, it's a little difficult to read what's going on. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little sequence there. And then now we cut back and we see all the uh, ninjas kind of beat up on their rooftop. And, uh, they're like, uh, again, these are wacky ninjas. He's like, hey, did we get him? Yeah. Is he hurt? He didn't look hurt. I think I got a bone bruise. Oh, I hate those. But yeah, there's a the kind of ninjas we're dealing with. And then on yep. the other rooftop, we see Tick. He's got a bunch of shuriken and, uh, you know, ninja stars stuck in his head and his, be- his chest and everything, but he's just brushing them off. And yeah, he's, like, he's way tougher than Mr. T in TNT, <laughs> taken out by one shuriken in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> but all the other ninjas are scattered across the rooftop, and he's like, yeah, that, these ninjas, they're wacky. And he's just smiling the whole time, you know. And uh, and Oedipus says, you're you're incredible. And it takes like, am I good? And again, more direct addresses needed here. Okay, Jerry, where's Shing? Yeah, she captures. I do like that Electric or Oedipus can uh, tell who all these people are, even though they're wearing the same (laughs) costume, but she knows them all by name anyway. Uh, So she grabs one ninja and she's threatening him, you know, and uh, she says, where's Shing? And uh, he says, ninja die before they reveal ninja secrets. And she's about to cut his throat. And he says, hey, just kidding. Uh, We're not sure where he is. I guess Shing in this situation would be like her her version of Stick. Yeah, um, yep. Definitely. Shing's the guy who trained her to be a ninja. And she trained for three whole weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's why she's falling into garbage cans and things like that. <laughs> Not the best. Uh, so he doesn't know. So she just conks him over the head with her sigh. She doesn't stab him, but she knocks him out. Then uh, she's talking to the tick. And uh, they exchange names. Her real name is Oedipus Ashley Stevens. <laughs> and he says, that's a, that's a terrible name. <laughs> uh, and she says, yeah, yeah, blame my parents. What's yours? Go, Jack. I am the tick. Oh, and what's your excuse? So there it is. That's a, another yeah. little joke there from Oedipus. And uh, eventually, the ninjas they, are back, and the chick yeah. starts picking up the, the chimney. He's gonna throw it this time. Well, they're they're. Uh, if you notice, if you look closely, the one ninja who's speaking. Well, first he says, "A home. You have not seen the last of us. The ninja are strong in this city. Your eyes are everywhere. You will not escape." That means you too, bug boy. But if you look closely, the lead ninja there, he's holding up a piece of paper, and it says, "Parting threat." So he's reading <laughs> parting threat, and. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the tick says, all right, I'm going to throw a chimney at him. So he rips up the chimney. Well, actually, he doesn't say anything. He's just ripping up the chimney. And then the next panel, we see the ninja headquarters. It's called Ninja World. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a tourist trap for people to go <laughs> experience ninjas. And we just see one of the ninjas saying, uh, then he threw a chimney at us. So I like that too. That's very funny. And now this is their leader, this guy. He's just a, a, a big fat guy. Um, yeah. Who would this be? The Kingpin? I mean, that so. part, yeah, that makes me think Kingpin. And they call him the district manager, so I don't know. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> I guess kind of that's what the Kingpin is in a way. <laughs> yeah. So they're just trying to figure out uh, what they can do about this tick fella. Because he has he's the strongest 30 men. He's invulnerable. How can we stop him, oh, district manager? And <laughs> And he tries to teach him a lesson. That's a pretty great name for a uh, ninja warlord, <laughs> district manager. And he says, when a great stone blocks the river, does the river try to flow through the stone? And uh, the ninjas are like, maybe. And he's like, no, no, no. It goes around the stone. You know, so you just <laughs> avoid the tick. Don't try to go through them. Just uh, go around them. And uh, so they got to come up with a plan. These ninjas are too Doesn't so evaporation work for this somewhere? <laughs> so they're, they're go big back the plan. other way. Wait, what's that? Does it go back the other way? <laughs> One of them thinks the water's just going to go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And But uh, the district manager says the big plan now is ele- – uh, we're going to call her Electra sometimes, but it's Oedipus. Right. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, <laughs> Oedipus's house, That's she's going to go there eventually. So let's just stake yeah. out her house. She probably has the artifact there. And <laughs> So how do the ninjas dis- – like disguise themselves to stake out. <laughs> well, <laughs> as masters of stealth, they uh, they decide to sc- disguise themselves as a hedge, uh, which basically consists of them all standing in a line, uh, creating a wall around the place, and then holding up like one stick each. <laughs> like they each have a twig, basically. 
that's <laughs> uh, it's pretty great. And so then we see uh, inside the house there, we see uh, Oedipus's parents. And mm-hmm. I guess we like, saw her dad and her stepmom, who she's not too fond of. And the stepmom doesn't seem too fond of her either. But she does seem very fond of her dad, which yeah. means her name really should have been Electra. That's true. But, <laughs> but yeah, her stepmom seems terrible. But they seem very rich, right? These people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're about to have some dinner party or something, some fancy dinner party. And like her mom yeah. just kills a butterfly or a, <laughs> like, is that what she does? She just breaks it in half. That's a moth. Part? Like, that's uh, foreshadowing of Arthur. Well, Arthur's in this book. Did you notice him in this? Is he? Yeah, I'll point him out to you if we get there. I think if I remember. Yeah. If we get there. (laughs) We might might just call it quits. (laughs) But yeah, we see her parents and her her stepmom seems like a jerk and she's like uh, mean mouth and Oedipus and whatnot. So uh, now we cut back and Tick and Oedipus are uh, outside across the street from their house and they notice the hedge. Of course, it's just nothing but ninjas. And uh, she says they're surrounding her house, disguise it as a hedge. <laughs> Ingenious, says the tick. <laughs> I like that there's like a little kid who's like, what are you guys doing here? He's like, we're a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Oedipus has a plan to get around the ninjas. Like she has a, a tight wire, like stretched across from the neighboring house to her bedroom window. And that's how she sneaks out at night. So she's just going to scamper across the tightrope there. And, Parents are uh, real observant. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the neighbors are <laughs> too. And, and she starts to make her way across the old tightrope and she loses her balance and she falls. And there, Jack, do you see old uh, Arthur next to the tick's face? Kind of. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So we see no. tick. We see tick like yelling like, hey, Oedipus. But then in the, if you look in the background, there's uh, Arthur in the, in the sky. Oh, they're oh, teasing it out. Yep. That's pretty cool. It is. So the tick then, uh, well, Oedipus is hanging by the rope. The ninjas are like, get her, a pinata. But uh, <laughs> the tick just leaps into action, runs across the uh, tightrope, snatches Oedipus, and then kicks his way through her window. And now they're safe inside the house. And he's, he's like, like, how the hell did I do that? <laughs> so this must be his drama powers kicking in. <laughs> yeah. I guess also this is issue three, so he's very early. I don't know. I'm guessing yes, he, issue one, he just escaped from the mental institution. And, uh, I don't know. I'll have to go back and read that, I guess. But uh, Oedipus is impressed. She says, you're very heroic. So now down on the ground there, the ninjas, they're like, hey, quick. Uh, he, the lead ninja flips a dime to one of the other ninjas. And he says, uh, go call the district manager for further instructions, because this was before cell phones and before pay phones were a quarter. This is back when they were a dime. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, is that accurate? Were they actually a dime still in yes. the late 80s? I believe I believe so. This would have been, yeah, 88. I, I don't know when they got moved to a quarter, but. Uh, That's uh, all I remember. Uh, and. Uh, they say uh, cut down the line. So uh, the ninjas are cutting down the line between the houses and like, they don't realize that they're going to fall when they cut that line. <laughs> so that's <good. laughs> They're sitting on the line while they're cutting it. Yep. Good little visual <laughs> joke in here for sure. So the one ninja, he still has like hedge sticks on his head and he's running to go make the phone call to the district manager and he gets hit by a car. <laughs> yep. The guy's like, Oh dear. I think I ran over a ninja back there. <laughs> his wife's just like well we're keep, we'll keep driving we're late as it is I mean it's not like we hit a collie or anything <laughs> as I guess you're right so they just keep driving so that phone call never yep. gets placed to the district manager the dime just rolls out of his hand so now we see uh, Oedipus and she's entertaining the tick there in her room and he's reading a book and she's trying to like uh, she gives him all the backstory about how she stole the artifact from him the thorn of oblivion and everything and uh yeah, about how Shing was once the leader of ninja operations in America, and the ninjas were an elite force of infiltrators and assassins. But Shing grew old and was overthrown by a younger, slower, less skilled trainee with a good business sense. This new district manager exposed the ninja to the American public and made them into a cheap tourist attraction. And they went over big. The ninja became cheapened. Their ranks filled with incompetence. The one guy's like, don't we get it to use any guns? <laughs> They're apparently missing the whole point of being ninjas. 
Yeah, and she says uh, that hang out he's crying about. And so that's apparently what happened is, you know, they became commercialized and ninjas have lost their way. And uh, Sh- now. Shing was disgusted with their new breed. He vowed to rid the world of the d- dishonorable ninja and would sacrifice all ninja to achieve his aim. He was too old now to carry out his plans. And that's where I came in. And Shing ran a classified ad. One on one ninja training with accomplished master. Learn forbidden ninjutsu secrets in your spare time. Call five 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 one nine five three. I am your Svengali. So, yep. Yeah. She's like, I just took up ninjutsu because it was something to do. I was supposed to enroll in ballet school, but that this looked more exciting. I studied and trained for almost three <laughs> oh, weeks. <laughs> almost <laughs> three weeks in. Almost. <laughs> And when Ching thought I was ready, he planted me into the ninja clan. He wanted me to steal the thorn of oblivion. And when I got the chance, I did just that. Yeah. That's how I got here today. <laughs> uh, Only while they were standing out guard outside of her home, they would have actually just gone inside and looked through her room. They could have gotten the thorn. And- <laughs> <laughs> so she's just uh, trying to find the thorn. She can't remember where she put it. And then she finds it buried in a little chest there. And what does the thorn do? Did we establish that exactly? Um, it, it see, uh, let's see. It says, uh, it's supposed to hold the souls of all true ninja, the very essence okay. of their beings. And the taster says, it looks like a giant piece of candy corn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she's still, uh, she's trying to figure out how they can get past all those ninjas out there waiting for him. Now we cut to the final page and we see the ninja still uh, standing around like a hedge. And uh, they see some cars coming. Oh, this isn't the final page. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Her stepmom's be kind of being bitchy to the wait staff. And uh, Oda Edip- or Oedipus is like, damn it. I forgot all about Amanda's party tonight. Now what are we going to do? And <laughs> Tick wants to beat up the hedge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, beat up she's hedge. like, we can't have a fight here. Innocent people could get hurt. My dad could get hurt. And then she's like, my stepmother could get hurt. She's got a big grin on her face. Well, my stepmother could get killed. Could get killed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's very happy about that prospect. And, uh, the, the, the tick the whole the time. Tick, he's no, no, we got to get out of here. Ninjas as well. He's yeah. not even paying attention. All their secrets. That's, uh, she gives she him a... Some, yeah, some clothes that belong to Lurch, their old butler. <laughs> <laughs> he has to wear a disguise to get out of there. Now we cut to the ninjas. This is the final page. And uh, the one ninja said, this is ridiculous. Uh, we can wait no longer. You, go find that fool. Say you don't look anything like a hedge. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you uh, don't either. Well, you don't either. But then there's another ninja in the back. And what is he thinking uh, to himself, Jank? This was a young Mike Dell when he joined the ninjutsu army. Uh, he says, I hope. This wraps up soon. Alf is on tonight. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> I never missed Alf. Yep. I don't care what ninja stuff was going on. <laughs> Gotta get home for Alf. And that's how the <laughs> issue ends. Next issue, a big fight. So that sounds pretty yeah. cool. And then I'm, we get a page I'm, of, hey, kids, it's learning time. How to draw the tick. <laughs> but I like Netflix. this. This is fun. Well, why don't you describe this for us, Jay? Uh, so the tick is telling you how to draw the tick. Uh and it says, that's right, with this easy-to-follow step-by-step method, we guarantee you'll be drawing your own unique version of the tick in minutes. So sharpen those pencils and give it a try. Step one, carefully draw an oval in the center of your paper. So it's like, oh, okay, I guess we're, we're drawing his head or something. Here we go. That's, that's a good start. Step two, now bisect that oval by drawing a line through both of its poles. All right, trying to get some symmetry. That That's good. Step three, now draw the tick holding an oval with a line through it. See, isn't that easy? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that is pretty good. And then uh, next time, learn to draw like Albrecht Gurr. They have a (laughs) famous painting down there in the corner. That's that's pretty funny. This uh, Enlin fellow, he's pretty funny. And then uh, we also get a picture of Arthur here at the end. Yeah, I think that's like the back cover, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's in color, so. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Our first experience reading Tick. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. It's not the not the finest piece of superhero satire I've ever seen, but it's damn good. There was a couple of really good jokes. 
<laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, it could have been a little better, but there were enough times in it when I laughed. I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. The Alf joke was good. <laughs> <laughs> the hedge. The name yep. is disguised as hedge. We're those. totally not a hedge. We totally are a hedge. Move and along. The tick, the tick on more than one occasion, just wanting to beat up the hedge. Let's just beat up the hedge. <laughs> like, yeah. And the tick just wanting to throw chimneys out. Three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Her training. There's a lot of good yep. stuff here. So especially for someone who's so young, you know, was, what, 18, 19 at the time of this. So yeah. um, good on them. They did good work here. Pretty and, solid. Yeah. And the art, I mean, it's it may not be professional comic book art necessarily, but it's not bad either. Like there's stuff, yeah. especially with like the district manager, like he looks pretty good and like his layer looks good. Like the chair he's sitting in, it's, it's all pretty solid. I can't really. Yeah, we've you know, done worse art on this show. On this show. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's no <laughs> question about that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, this is. You know, he's only 19. He was solid here. Like it's more like cartoony, obviously, but still, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, ah. So yeah, I liked it. Um, what else do I need to say about this? Yeah, so the original Tick run only was those 12 issues. There's been subsequent Tick series and like uh, a lot of holiday one shots and specials oh, over the years. Yeah. And I think Tick and Arthur was a title of a series or two over the years. Did um, Ben Edlin do those as well? It's a good question. I, I didn't even really. I assume. I assume so. Or at least probably the majority of them, I would guess, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, so I guess he just, I didn't really uh, find read, read up too much more about him. Ooh, there's a Tick number 1,000. Yeah, well, well they I, always. <laughs> number 100 where he teams up with invincible i gotta read that oh yeah that invincible <laughs> that uh, other tv show yeah, yeah. that's there pretty good go. so the tick what do you give it jank one out of ten uh you know what i'm gonna give it a, i think an eight uh, i enjoyed it quite a bit i could see you reading the rest of these i don't think i'd be against it you know what i'm right there with you i also was going to give it an eight because i think uh it, it accomplished what i wanted to do it was very solid and uh yeah. Again, I laugh more it's than a once. Change so. of pace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. You make me laugh, you're pretty good. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, that's the tick. Go enjoy it. Uh, next week on the big show, I believe our <laughs> buddy Bob Myers is going to return to the show next week. Okay. And, uh, That'll be good. Yeah. And if you recall last week here on the uh, program, we were reading, uh, what did we read? Uncanny X Men. And remember, I was talking about how Storm left the team, and then uh, in, like, annual nines, he just shows up in Asgard with Loki yes. and stuff. Yes. And, I think I solved that mystery as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, how, you, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, how did this even happen? Well, uh, one of our uh, loyal YouTube viewers, a fellow who goes, uh, I believe, Joe Warba, I doubt that's his real name, but that's what we're going to go with, uh, he pointed out to us, uh, the thing you're missing there is New Mutant Special Edition 1. From 1985, that was the uh, that led into that X Men annual, and I guess Storm had been in the pages of New Mutants uh, a few months prior to that. So, but this this New Mutant Special Edition one is what connects everything together. So we're going to read that next week. Okay, and, uh, <laughs> it's a big book. Really it narrow is, time period. It's yes, like it 64 is. 64 pages. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I wanted to read it because I never knew this book existed. Like, really? Oh, okay. You were aware I, of this? I had no sure, idea. Sure, I had it. And I think when I originally read that story, I read it in like a trade paperback I got from the library, and it had both parts, obviously. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I because I had that X-Men annual, but didn't have this, never knew it existed. And the <laughs> uh, writer's Claremont and the artist is Arthur Adams. Oh, so, yes. That's why I figured is. we'd do it as well, because it's Arthur Adams. So we'll uh, check it out. And I know Bob hey. likes the X-Men and mutant books, so I figured, all right, we'll just do it. So there you go. Sounds That's good. Next week on the big, uh, I was almost said fake radio show, but this is the big <laughs> comic show. It's also show. a fake radio show. <laughs> all right, so until next week, uh, again, if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We would appreciate it. And until then, don't get any jank on you. <laughs>